I'm Kelly Semenov at Parker Semenov Architects, and this is the first of a three-part video series entitled Money and Buildings, a practical guide to church building projects. In this video, we'll talk about how to find out what you need. We'll begin by talking about developing a program of space requirements, then list some rules of thumb for determining building area, and finish with some things to look for when considering purchasing a property. Whether you are a pastor or a member of a building committee, as you embark on a church building project, you might find yourself asking, where do we start? To design an appropriate building, one that meets your needs at a price you can afford, the architect needs to work within some parameters. The first step, then, is to find out what you need. And so we guide you through a process of introspection, looking into every corner of your organization, every ministry and subdivision of your church, to find out what you're about and how you function. The best design solutions come from the most well-defined design problems. In other words, the better we can understand what it is you want to accomplish, the better your building will support your particular church. You need to ask the right questions. We'll ask each leader for a description of their ministry in your church, how long it's been in existence, and how it's changed over the past few years. You'll tell us about any special features your space will need, and what other spaces it needs to be next to. We'll need to know what days and times it operates and who will be involved. We often lightheartedly tell churches to get with the program. The program is a document we developed that summarizes all your space needs, your philosophy of ministry, and your future direction, so we can start designing exactly the right building for you. The more complete the program, the better the design solution. It's a critical part of the process. Programming is a process of knowing and setting the priorities of needs that is essential for effective design. Notice we said needs and not wants. If everyone added an item to the wish list, you'd end up building the Taj Mahal. In terms of space, you'll need to meet your current needs as well as your future needs. Ideally, your new facility would meet your needs for decades to come. Because it's difficult to predict future growth, we recommend building in as much flexibility as possible with space that can be used for more than one activity. Often the biggest issue facing churches is whether to have a dedicated sanctuary or a multi-purpose gymnasium. We'll look at some pros and cons of each. A dedicated worship space comes with many benefits. A, floor, a sloped floor will allow comfortable fixed seating or pews with great sight lines to the platform. A dedicated sanctuary can be designed with a worshipful atmosphere and excellent acoustic properties, as well as elegant surface finishes. It can be set up for sound and lighting and then left undisturbed the rest of the week. On the other hand, the fixed seating of a dedicated space limits its usage for other activities. A dedicated worship center is an expensive option given its limited usage during the week. Fixed pews are also more expensive, up to twice as much as movable pew chairs. The main benefit of a multi-purpose auditorium is that it can be used for many different ministries, such as seminars, sports activities, and games. It also means that your facility does not need a second auditorium and or a gymnasium, which can significantly reduce building costs. Conversely, a multi-purpose auditorium is not specifically a worship space. Acoustics can be an issue, and higher platforms are needed to achieve good sight lines from every seat. Often, the musical instruments must be moved, stored, and set up for weekly worship services. And to accommodate activities such as sports, youth gatherings, and seminars, Room finishes must be able to withstand more abuse and can need more cleaning and maintenance. The question of dedicated versus multi-purpose will no doubt de generate much discussion among the building committee and members, but it's a matter of carefully balancing ministry goals, preference, and budget. Now we want to give you some rules of thumb as you think about how much floor space your building will need. These are rough guidelines only for planning purposes. Actual building area will vary with the layout. Overall, if you're building a single auditorium facility, you'll need an average of about 30 square feet per every seat. If it's a dual auditorium facility, that is, a sanctuary and a gymnasium, you'll need about 40 square feet per person. The main worship space will need about 10 square feet per person, including platform. The lobby will need 3 to 4 square feet per person in the auditorium and has potential for multi-purpose. Nursery space will be around 30 square feet per child. Education space will require about 25 square feet per child up to grade 6. Up to grade 12 will need 15 square feet per person. A gymnasium will be approximately 50 by 80 feet or around 4,000 square feet. 
Office area will need about 300 square feet per person, including work and meeting rooms. Washrooms will need 200 square feet per toilet, one per 60 men and one per 40 women. Corridors, mechanical rooms and wall thicknesses will use an additional 10 to 15 percent of the floor area. There are no set guidelines for storage space as it varies from church to church. Now let's look at some site requirements. As you know, parking is a critical issue that can limit church growth and future expansion. You might have plenty of room in the sanctuary for visitors, but if they can't find a parking spot, they won't stay. Municipal parking requirements of one stall for every four seats is usually not sufficient for current church needs. We recommend a ratio of one to one and a half or one to two. You can confirm this by observing how many people arrive in each car for a Sunday service. To park 100 cars, you'll need about an acre of land. If you have two morning worship services, you may need up to 30% more parking due to overlap in arrival and departure times. As you look at purchasing land, you'll need to know if the municipal zoning regulations will allow a church on the property. How high can your building be? How much floor area can it take up? Are there any easements or setback requirements? Is the site serviced with water, sewer, gas, and electricity? Is the site both accessible and visible? Not all visible sites are easily accessible. Try to avoid access through residential streets if possible, due to the resident's traffic and safety concerns. Is your property flat or sloped? Sloped sites are less efficient, so more area may be needed to compensate. Soils vary greatly and need to be tested as a condition of sale. Lots of organic material or sandy soils will require a more expensive foundation system. Stormwater management will need to be considered, that is, holding runoff on site and letting it drain into the municipal storm system at a prescribed rate. We hope we've given you some ideas about how the design process works and how to begin thinking about a church building program. These guidelines will work whether you're planning a small addition or a large campus development. The key at the beginning is not to get bogged down in the details, just think in general terms for now. In the next video we'll be talking about what will our building look like. For more information, contact David or Kelly at parkerseminoff.com.